So today's live session is 2.8. So this is a section that we had skipped when we did chapter two because you didn't really need the information until now. So rather than learn it and then forget it, figured it was better to learn it when you need it. So um, what you need out of this section is mostly how to write the solutions to sets using set builder and um, interval notation but it's also helpful to know how to solve linear inequalities. So I'm going to just start with what this is, go break down the definition and all that. So um, the word inequality basically means that you don't have an equal sign. So instead of the equal sign, you're using something else. So we have the less than symbol, the less than or equal to symbol, the greater than symbol, greater than equal to symbol, and then the not equal to symbol. So those are all considered inequalities. And these are less than or less than or equal to. And then those are the greater than or greater than or equal to. And the bigger number is always where it opens. So if you ha have the less than, the number on the left of the symbol is the smaller symbol, while the greater than the number on the left of the symbol is the bigger symbol. So it always opens up towards the bigger number. So that can help you determine whether it's a less than symbol or a greater than symbol. Um, when we have linear inequalities in one variable, you're going to have no exponents on the variables, just like linear equations. So that's why they're called linear is because they don't have exponents on the variables. And if you have more than one inequality symbol in use, what it's called a compound inequality. So an example of that would be if I had two is less than X, which is less than or equal to four. So that is basically saying that X is between two and four. Um, and we call it a compound inequality because it has two inequalities at the same time. We don't generally have compound equations, but you can have that with inequalities because equations are basically saying, okay, you have one solution, but with inequalities, we can have multiple solutions and they can be between numbers. So that's why we could kind of group these things together. Are there any questions so far? Okay, so next is to learn how to graph these and write the solutions because um, we're going to wait on the solving. We just want to make sure you know how to, to, to basically work with inequalities before you start solving things. So when you have an inequality, you're saying that something is greater than or less than, and you could have lots of answers because if you say that something is greater than two, there are lots of numbers that are greater than two. So instead of having one solution, you have essentially infinite many solutions. And so we need to write these in a way that you indicate that without writing every possible number, because writing every possible number is impossible, especially if you have decimals and all that stuff. So um, that's where we're going to write our solutions specifically with inequalities. And it usually helps to graph these so you can see visually where the where the solutions are. So we generally would graph them on a number line because we have one variable. So you just have a number line, a horizontal number line. We don't have an X and Y like we did last week. When you're graphing your solution on a number line, um, we use parentheses or open circles. So this is different from the graphing that we were doing last week. And we use parentheses or open circles if the endpoints, the stopping points, are not included in our answer. If they are included, if those are allowed to be answers in our inequality, then use brackets or closed circles. And this corresponds to the inequality symbol. So the less than or greater than symbol is parentheses the less than or equal to or greater than or equal to is brackets. And then there are two ways that we usually write the solution. It's either set builder notation or interval notation. I'm going to show you both, but 
But what's really important is that you learn interval notation because that's the notation that's standard and used in college algebra. So if you have to take college algebra, that's the notation you want to learn. So I'm going to start with set builder notation. So this is an example of set builder notation or basically how it's set up. So you have to have the curly braces. Those are required. And then you have a variable. So in this case, um, it's x, but you could have an inequality with other variables. So whatever letter you have in your inequality, you have first. Then you have a vertical bar. It's like half of the absolute value symbol. So the same way you would type an absolute value, it's the same way you would type this here. So it's a vertical bar. And I usually read that as the word where, but it could also be such that. Um, I, I, I read it as the word where. I think that makes more sense. And then you put your inequality in the next space after that, and then you close your curly braces. So I have an example here on the left our uh, bottom left where we have, so this is read as um, our solution is all x, where x is our variable, where, and that's the vertical line, x is less than 2. So then you have that inequality, x is less than 2. So it's just saying that every number that works is are the numbers that are less than two, but we're not including two. They have to be smaller than two. So it could be 1.9, it could be 1.99999 forever. Um, you could have negative 10. Any x value that is less than two works. So that's how you read set builder notation. Set builder notation is really easy because all you need to do is find the inequality, then you just pop it in. And then if you have to change the variable, you change the variable, but it's actually pretty easy. So are there any questions on set builder notation? Okay. So next is interval notation. And what is tricky about interval notation is that it often looks like ordered pairs. And so you have to know what, you have to know the difference in context. If you have something with X and Y, then it's an ordered pair. But if you have something with only X and you're doing inequalities, then it's interval notation. If it's asking for something called domain or range, it's interval notation. But if it's asking for an ordered pair, it's not. So you have to understand in context whether you're looking at an ordered pair or interval notation. So that's really important because they could look identical. Oops, I used the wrong type of right. We always write it from left to right, smallest to largest, just like you're reading from the right. And you're looking at a graph as you move from left to right, it goes from smallest to largest. So that's how we're going to write these. And just like with graphing, we use parentheses or brackets, and they correspond to the symbols. So if you're less than or greater than, you use parentheses. If it's a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, it's brackets. Um, it's going to be written in the same order as graphing, so that's going to be key. And then if you have endpoints at infinity, and the infinity symbol is like a sideways 8, then you have to use parentheses. So this is going to make so much more sense once you actually start seeing how it's used, but I wanted to get all the rules down. So I'm basically giving you the setup. So you can see an inequality, and A in this case is a number. That's a terrible looking A right there. Number. So the A that is in all of my inequalities is just any number. So if you have x less than 2, x less than 10, you have an inequality and you just have a number on the right side, you can go to this chart and that will tell you what the graph will look like, 
how to write it in set builder notation, and then what the interval notation looks like. So you'll be able to use this as a reference to help you um, take the inequality and then write the solution. So I'm going to first start with the graph. And so I need to draw a number line. And the right goes to positive infinity and the negative, the left goes to negative infinity. And infinity is a number we can't ever reach. It just means it goes on bigger forever or smaller for forever. And I'm going to actually just do the same thing for all of these. I was going to put them in ahead of time, but I wasn't quite sure how to draw that in PowerPoint. So, um, I figured I would wait. And you get better at the Indy symbol the more you do it, although still mine are not like perfect. So, now that I have my number lines in, I actually use a highlighter when I graph these so that it's a little easier, although I think my highlighter on here is going to be a little bit too big. So I'm going to just use a lighter color to graph. So uh, first you want to label the numbers that you're given in your inequality. So all of these dashes are going to be A. Usually I also put zero on the graph so you know whether the number is to the right of zero or the left of zero, but in this case, I, we don't know what A is. It's just a placeholder for a number, but you want to make sure you label it. So now the first inequality we have X is less than A. So that means if it's less than, it's smaller than A, and all smaller numbers are to the left. So you shade in your graph to the left. So I just take another color, and then I shade in that area. Now, A is not included because we're less than, we're not equal to that number, so A is not included. So if you're not including it, we either use an open circle or parentheses. So I'm going to only use the parentheses and the brackets. I'm not going to do open or closed circles here. So we're going to use a parentheses, and the parentheses faces the direction you're shading. So since our arrow is shaded to the left, the parentheses is going to face the left. So that's what the solution would look like. And then whatever A is, whatever the number is, you would just replace that number. Now, when we convert that to set builder notation, now all of these are going to look exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the inequality. So I can fill these in. You're going to get really good at drawing the curly braces. Um, sometimes I got, uh, what I used to do is I would turn my paper sideways and draw them, like sort of like a seagull. If you ever drew seagulls when you're, it, it's, it's like you get, it's like an M with an extra, see I can't even do it sideways, but um, it squiggles, you know, <laughs> you can practice. So the set builder notation looks the same. The only thing that changes is the inequality. So you're just literally writing in the inequality there. So I'm putting it in red so you can see what's changing. So if our inequality is X less than A, then our set builder notation has a curly brace, the X, the vertical bar, and then you have your inequality X less than A. And so I can just fill all of these and these are all gonna be really easy to fill in. So set builder notation, super, super easy. You don't even need the graph, you just need the inequality. Now I'm going to look at interval notation. And the interval notation you use based off of the graph. So when I'm looking at my interval notation, and I'm actually going to go to the laser pointer here. So we read it left to right. So the left here we have, a, we are considering the endpoint as negative infinity. The right endpoint of our graph or our shading is A. So your left is going to be negative infinity. The right side is going to be A. So I'm going to put negative, inf whoops, negative infinity, comma, A. So I put them in order that I see them, the left to the right. 
Infinity always has a parenthesis and it faces towards the middle. So my parenthesis is going to face towards the middle of what I'm writing. So it faces to the right. And then what you're going to put with um, A is going to match the symbol that we wrote here. So we're going to have a parenthesis heading to the left. So you can they're going to face the middle. So I have two parentheses and it faces the middle and that's the interval notation. So you can see why it looks like an ordered pair because you have parentheses on both sides. But it's not quite because we have infinity involved. So now let's compare that to x is less than or equal to a. So if we've got less than or equal to, I'm still smaller than a. So what I'm shading here is still going to be the same portion. But we're including a. So a is allowed to be an answer because it's less than or equal to. So if you're including a, use a bracket. And the bracket faces this shading. So I draw a bracket right there. So you can see that it looks almost exactly the same as the less than. The only difference is whether it's a bracket or parenthesis. And when we go to the interval notation, it's going to look very similar. Our left is negative infinity and the right part is parenthesis or is a. Negative infinity always has parenthesis, but in this case, a has a bracket on it. So they're still, when you're putting it in interval notation, still facing the middle. The only difference between these two is the parenthesis and the bracket. So this is why it's really important to know the difference. Math is all about the details. And here the only difference is a parenthesis versus a bracket. And it means something different in terms of your answer. So that's important. One way that I try to keep track of the difference or remember which one is which is that the parenthesis is curving away from the number like it can't touch it because it can't include that number but like if it's a less than or equal to you're allowed to include the number so i feel like the bracket is kind of touching the number it's straighter it's closer to it because we're allowed to include it that's the way i think of it in my head i don't know if that makes sense um, it makes sense to me and it also makes sense as to why the infinity symbols are also curved because you can't actually reach infinity so the, it works in my head to think of it that way. So now I'm going to move on to x is greater than a. And so greater than means we're bigger, and the bigger numbers are to the right. So that means we're going to shade to the right of a. And so this time we're going to infinity. And on the bottom, we have x greater than or equal to a. That also has the greater than symbol involved. So both of these are going to be shaded to the right. The difference is going to be what happens at a. For x greater than a, we're not including a, so it's a parenthesis, and it faces where we're shading. So that's going to be facing to the right. For x greater than or equal to a, we can include a, so that's a bracket, and it's going to face the shading. So I'm going to bracket right there. So again, when I convert this to interval notation, I'm reading it left to right. So on the left, I'm going to have a first, and then I'm going to have infinity on the right. So I'm going to have a and then infinity, positive infinity. So we're going from smallest to largest. You're reading it left to right. So on the left, I have a parenthesis at A, because that's literally what I have on my graph, comma. And then on the right, I'm going to infinity, and infinity always has a parenthesis. Now, the difference with the bottom one is it's greater than or equal to, and at A, we have a bracket, which is facing towards the middle, and then we're going to infinity, and that has a parenthesis. And, of course, both sides of the interval notation, they face towards the middle so that you know which parenthesis symbol to use. Are there any questions so far?
Okay. Next slide. Um, wait, did I accidentally? I don't know why I did the greater than or equal to twice. Um, you know what? Here's what we'll, we'll just, I accidentally put that one twice. Don't know why. We'll just <laughs> skip it. Or actually, what would be even, eh, it's fine. Okay. So now these are the compound inequalities here. If we ignore the first one and actually wrote it twice, we've got compound inequalities. So that means we've got um, numbers on either side. So these are the ones where it's in between. So when I draw my graph, I'm still going to have my number line. I'm still going to have negative infinity and positive infinity, but I'm going to have two values. The number that's always written on the left is the smallest, and then the number on the right is the largest. So these are going to go between A and B. So if they're not written in that order, you have to change the order. Okay, so I have my graphs on a set builder notation, easy enough. Our variable is x. I can fill that in. And the first thing I'm going to do is just fill in the, the, the set builder notation because that's the easiest. So um, we have a less than x and less than b. So that means our number is between a and b but does not include the endpoints. The next one we have a is less than or equal to x or less than or equal to b. So our answer is between a and b or it could be a or b. It includes the endpoints. And then we can have a mix. We could have it include a or not include a but include b or vice versa. So you can have it the other way around. But the number is in between there and then it's just a question of which endpoints are included. So Going to the graph. When you graph compound inequalities, your answer is always in between the endpoints, the numbers on either side of the x. So the shading is always going to be in between these for a compound inequality because they mean between. The question is, what do you have at the endpoints? So for a is less than x or less than b, so right here, our less than symbols are parentheses. And like I said on the previous slide, parentheses face the shading. So I'm going to have parentheses that are facing the shading here. Because the endpoints are not included, so I'm facing the shading. Next, the next one below, it's less than or equal to, which are brackets. So both sides with the A and the B have brackets and they're facing the shading. So I'm going to write brackets facing the inside where I've shaded. Now, um, on the, the last one here, we have A is less than X or less than or equal to B. So A has the less than symbol, which is a parenthesis. So I'm gonna have a parenthesis face the shading. B has a less than or equal to, which is a bracket. So it's going to have a bracket facing the shading. So it's going to be a mix of symbols there. So once you have a graph, then you can convert these into interval notation and you read them left to right. So all of these are going to be A comma B because that's the order that the numbers are from left to right. And then you're just copying down the symbols that you have in your graph. So you can see the first compound inequality looks like an ordered pair. So that's why it's important to know context. The one with the less or equal to symbols has brackets. And then when you have a mix, you have a mix of parentheses and brackets. So I'm just basically literally taking whatever the graph says here and just rewriting it without the number line. That's how we're converting from the graph to interval notation. So it's actually pretty, pretty easy once you realize how to do that. Are there any questions on these compound inequalities?
Okay. Now, I have another compound inequality that had I known I actually had double on the other slide, I would have stuck this with these, um, where it's just a different less than or equal to and then a less than. And then we also have possible things where you can solve an inequality and get no solution at all or every single number works. We had some examples of this when we were solving equations as well, where you could have no solution or all solutions. So I'm also going to show what those graphs would look like as well. And then also how it is in set builder notation. So I'm going to draw in my number line. And here A and B, those are my endpoints. If there's no solution, you don't have a, anything on your number line. And then we've got all real numbers. So I've got my number line there. I have set builder notation. Set builder notation is actually a little different for um, no solution and all real numbers. So um, let's see, we can do one for all real numbers, but no solution doesn't really have set builder notation. And then we have interval notation. So I'm going to start with the set builder notation for the inequality, the compound inequality, because I can just plug that in. A is less than X less than B. And then I'm going to do the graph of that one before I do the special cases. So our compound inequality, we're between A and B. I have the less than or equal symbol to, at A, so that's going to be a bracket facing the shading. And then less than at B, so that's going to be a parenthesis at B. And then when that gets converted to interval notation, we have a bracket A, comma B, and then the parentheses. Okay, so our no solution. If there's no solution, your graph of the solution is empty. You just have a blank number line. We don't really have any set builder notation for no solution. And we don't really have an interval notation. But we do have a special symbol that we use called the empty set. So usually you'll see the empty set maybe with interval notation and then sometimes with set builder notation they'll just look absolutely blank. So it'll look like set builder but there's nothing inside. So um, that would be how you indicate no solution. Now the symbol to the, the right under interval notation is Essentially, an, it's, I don't know if it's an O or a zero with the slash. So that means an empty set, essentially. And so it's really important to know that. And um, that's why I never write zeros with a slash through it, because I know some people do that. But if you do that, then it looks like this symbol. So um, just be very careful that don't write zeros with slashes, because then it looks like this symbol, and then things get confusing. So if there's no solution, you use one of those symbols. Now for all real numbers, when you're graphing it, that means every possible answer works. So that means, oops, uh, that means the entire number line can be a solution. So you're basically just shading in the whole number line. And you have to do it in another color or make it darker or something so that there's a difference between the no solution and the all real numbers. Because you have to vis visually be able to see there's a, a difference there. Now with set builder notation, I often use the symbol for real numbers. So it's like an R with an extra line through it. And that means real numbers. It's all part of the set notation for real numbers. So I will usually just write that. Um, or you can write inside there all real numbers. But I, I feel like the symbol is a little easier. Now, interval notation, we can do interval notation, just like we're doing interval notation for everything else. We have endpoints. We have a negative infinity endpoint, and we have a positive infinity endpoint. And then we know infinity on either side has parentheses. So when you write this in interval notation, you have a parenthesis, negative infinity, positive infinity, and then close your parenthesis. So that's how you would indicate all real numbers in interval notation. 
there any questions on this slide on how you um, indicate these possible solutions? Okay, so what we've done so far is the most important things that you need to know um, for when we start working with functions in 9.6 is we're going to be talking about domain and range and you're going to be writing your answers in interval notation. And um, the way that I figure out domain and range is I usually make a graph on the number line. So when you watch my video on that, you'll see my method for making a graph on the number line and that's how I do figure out my solution. So this will be very handy for that. Now what's next is solving inequalities. So now we're going to actually start solving these. When you're solving inequalities, you're following the same rules that you're solving for an equation, except there are a few, a couple extra things. But you're allowed to add a number on both sides. You're allowed to subtract on both sides. You can multiply or divide on both sides. Um, if you do it with a positive number, that's completely fine, but there's a difference if you multiply or divide by negative. So if you're multiplying or dividing by negative, the inequality symbol changes direction. So if it's a less than symbol, it becomes greater than, because you're basically flipping which side has the bigger number. The other difference is when you're solving a compound inequality where you have two symbols, you basically have three sides that you're working with. Sides is a bad term, but there's three pieces because you have a left and middle and a right. And so instead of doing things on both sides, like a left and right, you're doing it on three sides, left, middle, right. So you still work through different sections. You're just doing it three, three things at a time instead of two. Those are the only two differences. But otherwise, solving is exactly the same as regular solving for when we're solving for x. So I'm going to start with two simple examples. And of course, I'm going to start ramping up the difficulty as we go. So we're going to solve. We're going to graph the answer. Then we're going to write it in set builder notation and interval notation. And I'm doing this so that it's good practice for you, so that you, you can practice all of these. So, our goal when you're solving inequalities is to always have the variable on the left. That's really important. Because that is usually how we read inequalities. We read them from left to right, and so we want the variable to be on the left. And that's usually how I did the equations as well. Um, and we can solve it with it on the right, we just have to do a trick. And so that's what I'm going to show you on the right is what happens if it's not on the left. So on the, on the first one here, we have y minus 7 is less than 6. So I want y by itself on the left. I have minus 7, so just like with an equation, I'm going to add 7 to both sides. The important thing then is to remember that it's not an equal sign. You have to drop down a different symbol. So now instead of equals, we have a less than symbol. So that's y is less than 6. So that's our solution. And the easiest thing is to do set builder notation, where, oh, I just did it. It's a, our variable is y. So with set builder notation, I need to put a y there. And then y is less than 6. So you can see that I actually wrote x, but it's a y. So it's really important to make sure you're using the right variable. So that's my set builder notation. I usually do those one after another because they're really simple. Then I do the graph. So I'm going to draw my number line. And I'm going to put 6 on my number line because that's the number I have involved. And then I look 0 on the number line just so I know whether I'm in the positive or negative. You're not required to. I just like to put it on there. You don't have to make sure it's to scale. You don't have to label every single point. Just label the important points. So our less than means we're shaded to the left. So I used a highlighter this time. 
So highlighters are really handy. We've got it's going to the left, and then because it's less than, it's a parenthesis facing the shading. So I have my graph, and then I read my graph from left to right. So the left part of the shading is at negative infinity, and that always has a parenthesis. And then the shading stops at 6, and that has a parenthesis. So that is our interval notation. Now I'm going to do the problem on the right. We have 3 is less than or equal to z minus 6. So I'm going to solve for z, so I'm going to add 6 to both sides. And we have 9 is less than or equal to z. Now, this is not normally how we read inequalities. So we want to flip it. Now, when you flip it, you can flip it so that the z is on the left, but everything gets flipped. So if we have a z and we see places of the z in the 9, we have to also change the direction of the inequality. So you're allowed to do that because if you read it from right to left, z is greater than or equal to 9 because z has the open part. So z is bigger. So then I can put z on the left and use my greater than symbol. So the open part is facing the same thing it did before. So that means it's the same inequality. It's just written differently. So then our set builder notation, our variable is z, where z is greater than or equal to 9. And then I'm going to draw my number line so I can do the graph. I've got 9 on my number line. So if we're greater than, we're to the right, going towards positive infinity. We have a greater than or equal to. That line is the equal to, so that's telling us a bracket. So that's another way to remember. If it has a line, then your symbol will be a straight line. So it's going to be a bracket facing the shading. And then we can put in an interval notation and if it helps you can even write it directly underneath we have a bracket at nine then we go to infinity and infinity always has a parenthesis so you can just basically take your your drawing and then just write underneath it match everything up and that gives you your interval notation Are there any questions on these two examples Okay, next I'm going to, um, we've got a couple more here that are a little more complicated. We've got something with a fraction and then we've got something involving a negative. So you can see how that works. So on the left we have D is less than two, or D is less than two, D over two is greater than or equal to 12. So we want to get rid of the fraction. We want to get rid of that 2, and we do that by multiplying because it's divided by 2. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2. And you are allowed to, oh, I don't like that. Let me change color there. Um, there we go. So I can multiply both sides by 2 in order to get D. So that gives me D is greater than 24. So I multiplied on both sides, but I multiplied by a positive, so I did not have to change the direction of the inequality. You only change the direction if you're multiplying by a negative. So multiplying by a positive, just symbol stays the same. So now my set builder notation, I have the curly brace D where d is greater than or equal to 24. Now I'm going to draw my number line. Good. 
So put 0 0.84 on there. I'm greater than 24, so I'm bigger than 24, so I'm going to the right. And I have the equal to, which tells me it's going to be a bracket facing that. And then when I put this in interval notation, my left endpoint, the left shading is at 24 with a bracket. And then it shades until infinity, which always has a parenthesis. So simple enough. I multiply both sides by 2, and then I graphed, got my interval notation. Now we have negative 4c is greater than 24. So I need to solve for c, which means dividing by negative 4. And when you divide by a negative, the inequality switch flips direction. So if it helps to circle that, you can, just to remind yourself. When dividing or multiplying by a negative, not adding or subtracting, that doesn't, it doesn't matter with those. It's just with multiplying or dividing. If you're multiplying or divided by negative, that changes direction. So I even like to draw an arrow, and then I flip that first so that I don't forget. Now on the left, I kind of covered it up, but I have a C. Oh, that looks like a 7. There we go. Uh, whoops. I didn't change direction. There we go. <laughs> Make sure I actually change direction there. Um, it was greater than. Now it's less than. And then 24 divided by negative 4 is a negative 6. So set builder notation. We have our curly brace. C vertical bar where C is less than negative 6 and then close your um, curly braces. Now I'm going to do the graph so I'm going to draw my number line and I've got negative 6 and then 0 so that's to the left of 0. And we've got 6 is less than, so we're shading to the left, to smaller numbers. And it's less than, it doesn't have the line, so it's going to be a parenthesis. And it faces the shading. So when I read this, I read it left to right. So I have negative infinity on the left, which has a parenthesis. And then the shading stops at negative 6, which also has a parenthesis. So that's the interval notation. Are there any questions on these two examples? Okay, um, just to make sure I have enough time, I'm going to skip, no, I skip this one. I thought I had another slide of other stuff. Maybe it's the next one. Okay, I don't want to skip this one. I might skip the next two slides after that and then go back to it if we have time. But these are the compound inequalities. So you can see that there's two inequality symbols, and they don't have to match. They don't have to be the same symbol. They could be different symbols there. But you can see that we've got three sections. If it helps, you can kind of draw lines there so you can see that there's three sections. So whatever you do on one side, you, do have, you have to do it on all three sides or locations. And your goal for compound inequalities is the variable in the middle. So that is your goal. You want to make sure your variable is in the middle with these. So on the left, I have 0 less than k plus 7 less than 6. So I have a plus 7, and I want k in the middle, so I need to subtract 7. And I have to do it in three places there on all three sections. So that's what makes these a little different. But the steps are essentially the same. You're still solving, you're still adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. So on the left, 0 minus 7, that gives me a negative 7. I need to drop down my less than symbol. 
I have a K in the middle, so seven's canceled. Drop down my less than symbol, six minus seven is negative one. And when you do this, you wanna make sure that the smallest number is still on the left and the largest number is on the right, because if it's not, you have to flip them around. So this is okay. We've still got the smallest, negative seven is less than negative one, so it's still small to large going left to right. So in set builder notation, my variable is k, where negative seven is less than k, which is less than negative one, and then I close my set builder notation. Next is the graph. So I've got zero here. Negative one is there, negative seven is there. So I'm putting both negative seven and negative one on here. And then I put zero just so that I know where the positive negatives are. That just, I like to have that. So our compound inequality says that we are between these two values. So we are between negative seven and negative one. So I'm going to shade that. And then they both have the less than symbol, which is parentheses, because they don't have the equal to, they don't have the, so I'm gonna have parentheses facing the inside, facing the middle, basically facing where the shading is. So that would be my graph. And then with interval notation, again, I'm reading left to right. My left endpoint is at negative seven, where I'm shading, and that has a parenthesis. And then my right endpoint is at negative one with a parenthesis. So it looks like an ordered pair, but because we're solving an inequality, it's not. We don't have an x, y for answer. We have any value between negative seven and negative one works. So now I'm gonna to move to the next one on the right. We have negative six less than or equal to 4a minus 2, which is less than or equal to 12. We want a to stay in the middle, and we always do the adding subtracting first, so I'm going to add 2 to every side. So in three locations here because of the compound inequality. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. I drop down my less than or equal to symbol. I now have only 4a in the middle. I have a less than or equal to symbol, and then 12 plus 2 is 14. Now I want to divide everything by 4 because I just want the a. Um, and I need to divide everything, so that's in three places here. So negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1, less than or equal to a, less than or equal to 14 over 4 will stay as a fraction. Divide 2 out of the top and the bottom, and that reduces to 7 halves. I'm going to skip this. Actually, I can even add. What's really easy for set builder is that you can just add it in directly to your answer. And bam, I have my set builder notation. So I just added in my curly braces, my A, and then the vertical bar. I've got my set builder. Now I'm going to do my number line so I can graph it. Negative infinity. I have negative one, zero, seven halves. So seven halves is positive, so that's going to be the right of zero. Our answer is between these. Now, both of these have a less than or equal to, which is a bracket. So I'm going to have brackets at each endpoint facing the middle. So when I put this in set builder, no, or not set builder, I put this in interval notation, I go from left to right. My left endpoint is at negative one, where I have a bracket. 
Now I have to go not to zero to seven tabs. That's my right endpoint, and that also has a bracket. So that gives me my interval notation. Bracket negative one comma seven halves bracket. Are there any questions? Okay. I'm going to skip my next two slides. I'll come back to these if we have more time, but I want to get to the stuff for word problems with inequalities. Uh, we probably won't have time. So we've got phrases indica indicating linear inequality. So this is, if you see these words, um, this is how it gets translated. So if you see is less than, then that gets the less than symbol. Is greater than, that's the greater than symbol. Um, some of the tricky ones here is like if it says exceeds, that's greater than. Then we have is than or equal to. Well, that's the literal symbol. Um, this is where the tricky ones are at most or no more than. Those are also less than or equal to symbols. Um, and then we've got A is at least or no less than. The no more than and no less than are really, really tricky. So I definitely, those you don't see too often, though. But you'll see at most or at least quite a bit, and so it's good to understand those. And then if it says if it's literally between A and B, that's where you got a common inequality. So I will just keep this as a reference for when you go to word problems. Um, so that you know how to translate them into the inequality. Now, the words less than, this is really tricky. How do you know whether it's an equation or inequality? You could have two possibilities here, and the dots are just like, things. So you could have something is something less than something else. I should have had three more dots there. Or something is less than something. So the difference is where the is is located. So if we had seven is 10 less than x, that gets translated as 7 equal to 10 less than tells us it's going to be a negative 10. The word than is a plus and then x. So the is and the less than are separated out. That's going to tell you you have an equal sign. If instead we said we had seven is less than 10. So the difference is that the is less than is together, it's not separated. Then that gets translated as an inequality. So that would be translated as seven less than 10 with the less symbol. So knowing the difference between the two is all about where the word is is located. If the word is is separate from the less than, then you have an equation. If the is is combined with the less than, then it's a less than symbol. So this is another thing where the little details really matter on how it gets translated. And it's where is the word is. So that is really important. So I wanted to make sure that I got to this um, before the end. So um, we've got 
basically two minutes. So Ashley, do you want me to go back and do those other two problems? Are you willing to um, stay on for another 10 minutes or whatever to do those two that I skipped? Or do you think you are okay? Okay. So that's fine. Okay. So we'll go back to these. Um, so we've got, these are just, these aren't compound inequalities, but they're more complicated ones. So I wanted to make sure to kind of go over these. So that I wanted to do the other stuff first. I'm going to just recopy this. 5R plus 4 is greater than 4R minus 1. So if it helps to highlight where the inequality symbol is, that's fine. Our goal is we want to have the variable on the left. So if you've got the variable on both sides, default it to the left. So I'm going to subtract 4R. I always move the variable first, especially in cases like this, so that I make sure everything is in the right, right order. So 5R minus R is 1R. So I have R plus 4, then my greater than symbol, and then minus 1. So yeah, if it helps, because it's a new symbol, you can just keep highlighting it to help keep track of everything. Now I want to get rid of the plus 4. So I'm going to subtract 4. Oops. I'm trying to change the pen and it wanted to be in the highlighter. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 4. So then I have R. And even though it's a negative there, we're not multiplying or dividing this, so the symbol does not change. So that's R is greater than or equal to, and then negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. And since so set builder notation, you have r, where r is greater than or equal to negative 5. So if we want to graph this, I'm going to put negative 5 on my number line. It's smaller than 0. If r is greater than or equal to negative 5. So it's to the right of negative 5. So I'm going to shade everything here. And I just keep going until the end. I don't stop at 0. I just keep going. And then because it's an equal to, it's got that line that's telling us at 5 we're going to have a bracket. So that has to face to the right. So then in interval notation, on the left, where shading starts, that's at negative 5 with a bracket. And the shading ends at infinity, which always has a parenthesis. And that parenthesis kind of looks like the end of the arrow, if that helps you remember as well for, for the infinity symbols, is that it kind of looks like an arrow. The arrow is not straight. It's kind of curved. So that might help you remember. So this is a little more complicated one where, you know, if you have multiple things that you have to do here, the steps are essentially the same. There are just some things you have to look out for. Now the, this one. Okay. So again, maybe I'll switch to purple. I'm going to rewrite this. Maybe on the right yeah i can do it here three minus four and then actually i'm going to move it over just in case i run out of room three minus four times h minus two is less than five h plus six then i'm going to just highlight the less than just to kind of help you since it's a new symbol so we want a variable on the left, but the first thing we need to do is the distributing. So it's uh, with same thing when you're solving any equation, you distribute before you start moving things on either side. So I need to multiply that negative 4 through the parentheses. So if it helps, I can make that a plus negative 4. So that's 3 plus negative 4 times h. 
That's negative 4h. So if you want, you can even just write it 3 minus 4h. Then I have a negative 4 times negative 2. So the negatives cancel. I get a positive 8 since 4 times 2 is 8. Now I have my less than symbol, 5h plus 6. On the left, I have like terms because I can combine the 3 plus 8. So 3 plus 8 is 11. So I get 11 minus 4h is less than 5h plus 6. Now, I like to keep my variables on the left. I want my variables to be on the left, so I'm going to move the 5h first. That's positive. So I am going to subtract the 5h from both sides. So I have my 11 minus 4 minus 5. Those combine to negative 8. I said negative 8. Negative 9 h. And then less than 6. Now I have that 11 that I need to move to the other side. So since that's a positive 11, I need to subtract 11 from both sides. So I'm going to do minus 11, minus 11, and then dropping down, that gives me a minus 9h less than 6 minus 11 is negative 5. So, highlighting my inequality symbol. Now, I want to get rid of the negative 9, and I am dividing by a negative. So, this is where we're going to have this special thing, because I'm dividing by a negative, which means my inequality has to change direction. So, just like I thought, I ran out of room. So, I'm going to just kind of go up. So you end up with an h, but now it's a greater than because we divide it by negative, and then negative 5 over negative 9 is going to be a fraction, but the positive, the two negatives cancel, and so we're going to leave that as 5 over 9. So our answer is h is greater than 5 over 9. That inequality changes, it flips directions because we divide it by a negative. So then in set builder notation, it's h, or h is greater than 5 over 9. Now I'm going to draw my number line to graph it. And I'll, I don't really care where 5 over 9 is, I just know that it's bigger than 0 because it's positive. So that's all I really care about on my number line. We're greater than, so I'm to the right of it. And then because it's greater than and we don't have the equal to sign, I'm going to have a parenthesis. So when I put this in interval notation, I'm going to start with 5 over 9. With a parenthesis. And then it goes all the way to the right to infinity, which also has a parenthesis. And so that's how we would write that solution. Do you have any questions? Okay, so that that is everything that I had planned. Um, I know it went a little longer, but I do thank you for sticking with me. The most important part is being able to write the interval notation because that's going to be the most useful when you get to 9.6. Um, the solving of the inequalities is not as important. Um, you will see that again in college algebra if you have to move on. But it's the, the interval notation, the set builder notation, that's going to be the most important for the rest of this, uh, this week's material. So 
Thank you very much for sticking with me. And I'm sorry if there's been a sound in the background. I don't know if you can hear it, but somebody's doing something outside. Um, don't know what they're doing. Hopefully my mic is not picking up on that crossing fingers because <laughs> I'll find out when I listen to the recording. So thank you very much for joining me. Um, from here, I recommend watching the videos that I have in the video section. I don't have one on 9.5, but I do have one on 9.6 on functions and um, yeah, this is the last week. So, so you're ready to get done with math. <laughs> so thank you again for joining me um, and I hope you have a great night and I will, I guess, talk to you in the discussions. <laughs> All right, you take care.